welcome to another session of ashtanga webinar series this time the topic is stroke we have a, a, a valuable guest here who can talk about stroke before that i would ask uh, the executive director mr t r shashivarya to give a brief introduction on ks warriors ashtanga aerobics private limited a very happy evening to all the guests present here and our dear dr rashmi who is going to present us on a topic of stroke it is a great evening indeed that we have such luminaries here in this topic uh, i wish to introduce our company ks varias ashtanga aerobics private limited trichy uh, the company was started in 1936 by uh, my grandfather ks varias and girish's great grandfather ks varias studied ayurveda under the doyen ts varias of kotakalari vidishala in 1933 he completed his course later he came down to trichy to establish his own company and uh, it was during the world war 2 days and he was not able to get medicines from kotakil when he decided to go for manufacturing so he started his own manufacturing and started his company in 1936 established himself here in trichy and spread from here we manufacture about 300 and more medicines in our fold uh, more, more more than 200 of them are shastric classical products and the rest our own experiential products ayurveda being a, a, an experiential science we have a lot to learn from experience of the elders so here we are after 85 years and still running there are many companies which don't go beyond the 5 year mark we have strived 85 years and we are doing well and uh, here's a company that has been uh, practicing true ayurveda right from the beginning so with that introduction i leave the rest to dr girish wari thank you sir thank you for that wonderful introduction uh, today's topic stroke is a major non communicable disease uh, and is the number one cause of severe and complex disability in human population worldwide and the fourth leading cause of death in india it occurs when there is a blockage in blood supply to the brain or when a blood vessel in the brain ruptures and bleeds so apart from the risk factors such as hypertension diabetes heart disease and positive family history other lifestyle factors such as unhealthy diet obesity lack of physical activity stress and tobacco use contribute to its occurrence strokes can be prevented by making simple modifications in how individuals spend their lives or simply altering our lifestyle so today's speaker dr rashmi there is a brief profile of the guest dr rashmi is a panchakarma specialist uh, working as a consultant at at answer healthcare private limited bangalore she is also a professor and hod in the department of pg studies in panchakarma at ramakrishna ayurveda medical college bangalore dr rashmi graduated from sdm college of ayurveda hasan karnataka she has secured first rank in all subjects in post graduate entrance test karnataka and chose to complete md uh, in panchakarma specialty from government ayurveda medical college bangalore she is also certified by SVYASA University SVYASA University in therapeutic yoga Dr Rashmi was honored with Ayurveda Sharada award from the Himalaya Drug Company she has conducted many reorientation training programs for physicians and students and has given several interviews about various clinical conditions and panchakarma treatments telecasted on television we are very happy to have Dr Rashmi here as our guest today and speaker today uh with that i would also like to add uh, uh, to everybody present here that if you have any queries you can put it in the chat box uh, you will all be muted uh, at the end of the session the question answer session would start up and during that time if you even want to ask questions directly that can also be done so with that i uh, uh, hoping that there will be no uh, uh, interruptions in between we would like to start uh, the webinar i would like to give a, give the stage over to dr rashmi Thank you, Girish. Good evening, one and all. Sarve Guru Bhyo Namaha. Um, thank you, Girish, for the wonderful introduction. Grateful to you. Uh, grateful to Ashtanga family for giving me an opportunity to be a part of the series. Um, so uh, let's start with the talk. I don't want to take much time talking. other things so let's start with the um with my session where it will be an um 
discussion, more of a discussion where let's discuss about stroke, what Ayurveda has to say. So let's see what Ayurveda has to say about stroke, whether it's a particular disease or it's a, or it's a disease syndrome, what it is. So as aptly told by Dr. Girish, you know, stroke kills more, more people than malaria, tuberculosis and AIDS together, such as the severity of the stroke. So it's better we know about this disease. It's a number one cause for complex and severe disability. Every six seconds, someone somewhere will die from stroke and one in six persons will suffer from stroke in their lifetime. It's also very interesting to know this fact that every minute if stroke is untreated, the average patient loses 1.9 million neurons and 12 kilometer axonal fibers. Each hour in which treatment fails to occur, the brain loses as many neurons as it does in almost 3.6 years of normal aging. So it's, it's really shocking to go through these facts. After going through these facts, really we feel, okay, what better can be done to prevent this stroke? So let's see. The concept now has changed. The stroke is compared, it's compared as a, uh, compared to heart attack and told it's a brain attack. It is something similar to heart attack itself, where the blood clot blocks blood flow to the heart muscle and causes a an heart, heart attack. Same way, blood clot blocks blood flow to the brain and causes a brain attack. So nowadays, instead of stroke, the term brain attack and uh, acute ischemic cerebrovascular syndrome is the term what is used. So it's a syndrome. I'll explain later in my slides, like how even in Ayurveda, it is told as a syndrome, not as a single disease. So coming to stroke to understand exactly what is stroke, let's see what the WHO or the World Health Organization has to say about this. WHO says it's a neurological deficit of cerebrovascular cause. It's a so definitely it's a neurological problem occurring because of the cerebrovascular, cere cerebro something related to the brain and vascular something to related with our blood system that persists beyond 24 hours or is interrupted by death within 24 hours. So definitely it's a brain injury which causes by the interruption of blood flow due to a blood clot or ruptured blood vessel. So usually stroke occurs when blood flow to the brain is interrupted by a blocked blood vessel or a burst blood vessel. So it's very simple here. We have to understand usually. So this is a syndrome with so many manifestations. So how it occurs is the main point here. So either there will be deprivation of, that is the brain tissue is deprived of blood flow because of two things, either the artery which supplies blood to the brain is blocked or because of the increased pressure the blood vessel gets ruptured or it bursts open so when there is lack of food for the issues the neurons that is the cells in the brain they die within minutes so it happens very quickly the process occurs very quickly so thus, based on this cause, it is divided into mainly into two. two. Uh, this is important to understand because based on this classification itself, the symptoms also vary so that one can make out which type of stroke even for the patient to understand and for the um, person who is treating to understand, it makes easy. So it's of two types, mainly stroke. It is one is the ischemic stroke and infarction. So which is the commonest type, which accounts for around 85% of all the incidences. So an ischemic stroke occurs when a blood vessel that supplies the brain is blocked and blood flow to the part of the brain is impaired. So thus the brain cells and tissues, they begin to die within minutes due to lack of oxygen and nutrients. 
So the area of the shoe depth is called infa. So this process is infarction and the area which is affected is called the infarct. Again, it is of two types based on the block where it happen, happens that is thrombotic or the embolic. That is, if the block has occurred in the brain, then it is a thrombotic one. Embolism is, there is a plaque or a block which has moved from other part of the body to the brain and has caused the block. Then it's an embolic stroke. The other variety is the hemorrhagic one. You know, hemorrhage, hemorrhage means bleeding. The word meaning is bleeding. So this type of stroke is, occurs only in 15% cases. It occurs because of the excessive bleeding where a blood vessel which supplies to the brain that ruptures and starts bleeding. Apart from this, there is something else, which is which is a different thing, but which is something like, you know, it's a warning signal that we call it as a mini stroke or TIA. That is transient ischemic attack. It's a transient attack. That is the signs and symptoms often appear soon after the stroke has occurred. If uh, the symptoms last less than one or two hours, it is known as TIA or it's a mini stroke. That is to a person will experience, you know, weakness in the arms, legs or deviation of the mouth, these symptoms, but it will remain only for one or two hours. Then patient becomes all right. This is called mini stroke. So this will be a warning that something is wrong. Something is going wrong in the brain. Please awake and get the things corrected. So this is a table uh, which is mainly for the students or the scholars who would like to understand the difference between the hemorrhagic thrombosis and embolism. I'll not be going through this in detail, uh, which will be more useful for the students to um, differentiate, differentiate the types of the stroke. Okay. Coming to the risk factors. So we knew now these are the things what's going to happen. But what are those factors? Because as such, um, in the science, it's not told what exactly causes stroke. It always told this happens. They have explained this is a process which is going to happen. And these are the factors which are contributing for that. So in the respect, risk factors, we can see two things. That is, one is the modifiable risk factors and the non-modifiable risk factors. That is, modifiable are those like the high blood pressure, hypolipidemia or high cholesterol, diabetes, tobacco smoking, excessive alcohol intake, then few heart diseases, drug abuse, lack of exercise. These things, if we get to know, then definitely we can correct these things. We can modify the things or modify our lifestyle and see to that the stroke doesn't happen. Whereas non-modifiable risk factors are something which runs in the family. That is always you have to keep your flag up. That is anytime it can happen or you know that. But still, I don't agree with non-modifiable also because when you don't know that it is in the family, that is family history of stroke then you will be more, more alert and you will take more precaution uh, to stay healthy. Then previous TIA, that is previous mini stroke attacks. Okay, then age factor, of course, after 55 years, uh, we are prone to a lot of diseases. And according to the male-female ratio, it is the chances of getting strokes are more in men even though 9% greater chances are in men, but the death rate is more in women. So this we have to look into. What may be the causes? That is probably because of obesity, which is more in females, okay? Or lack of exercise. Who doesn't give more importance to doing exercise and keeping fit themselves? Probably this may be the factors which is causing to higher death rate in women. So these factors are something we are going to play with or we have we need to work about. So this, this knowing what can cause, now let's see how to, 
I have to know that a stroke has happened because many a times we are unaware. If something is happening, we are not able to make out, which makes the treatment or, you know, um, person to become less disabled, little difficult. If a person next to him or if the person himself is able to make out, okay, these are the things which are going to tell me that stroke is happening. Then it's very easy to act fast, correct? So in case of ischemic stroke, usually there'll be sudden numbness or weakness of face, arm or leg, and all these things can happen together. There'll be sudden confusion, difficulty in speech and understanding, sudden difficulty in vision in one or both eyes, include loss of vision, also double vision, this can happen. Sudden difficulty in walking, dizziness, imbalance, and loss of coordination. So if you find any one of them also, please try to get help. In case of hemorrhagic stroke, usually there will be sudden severe headaches. So please, if you get a headache, don't take a painkiller and subside it. See to that what is, try to find out what is the cause for the headache. Sudden declining level of consciousness, that is patient may faint or there may be confusion, convulsion or even it can be a coma and rapid onset of nausea and vomiting. These are the few symptoms of hemorrhagic stroke. So try to um, educate, create awareness, in your own families about these symptoms, okay? These are the features which can be found in stroke and try to act rapidly. Quickness is very, very important in stroke because I always tell my patients, don't take a painkiller and subside the pain until you know what is the cause of the pain. This is very, very important because any pain, you should, you should know the cause, whether it's abdominal pain, it's a headache, or if it's vomiting, simple vomiting also, try to find out what is causing the vomiting. Many a times we think, okay, he would have ate or she would have ate a lot or uh, the tummy is really full. That's why he threw up. That's what many people think many a times, but try to find out what can be the cause. Okay. Apart from this, there will be abrupt onset of cognitive, motor, and sensory deficits will occur. Then dysphasia and dysarthria, that is difficulty in speech. It can be difficulty in the articulation. That is how to form a sentence. Many patients feel difficulty to form a frame, frame a sentence or many people forget words. They will not be able to recollect words and talk. Or many people feel they have a very feeble voice. They're not able to speak properly. These are very common things which happens, okay? Then disturbance in the coordination, the hand leg -like coordination. There may be disturbance. There can be even a facial droop and loss of consciousness in many cases can happen. So thus we get uh, patients coming in different different you know stages some patients may come um, may come with just you know loss of strength some may come as a in semi-conscious state or some people may approach the medic in completely coma stage so the stage differs so we'll be wondering whether really any investigations help here yeah definitely um there are few investigations which actually point towards stroke, towards diagnosing the stroke, like the MRI, the magnetic resonance, angiography of the head, CT scan, carotid Doppler, which will help you to make out what is the, uh, where the actually the hemorrhage has happened or to find out whether it's because of bleeding or it's because of, you know, an infarct. It's because of some emboli or thrombus in the brain or what is the condition of the arteries to know this this helps even arteriography other things like you know echocardiography or taking an x-ray doing glycosylated hemoglobin level that is the hba1c fasting lipid profile these are the tests to rule out what can be the cause these are not these are not the direct tests which are going to diagnose the stroke but this will help you to find out what is the risk factor 
whether the patient is uh, uh, has diabetes or the cholesterol is high that's why the stroke has happened or is there any cardiac issue heart disease because of which the stroke has happened that needs to be treated so these are the things to know these things the investigations actually help and this diagnostics case it's mainly for the scholars or the students who are going to study about the stroke not for the um, patients actually so i have um, listed out few diagnostic scales here which will help the um, doctor to understand whether it's a minor stroke it's a moderate or it's a moderate to severe or it's a, or it's a severe stroke so these scales mainly enlist the activities of the daily routine activities daily routine and that's how the stroke severity will be found out so when we look this this was something a brief about the stroke uh, i took this brief introduction so that i can explain what is told in ayurveda taking the help of this so in the first slide i told you the concept of stroke now has changed into like heart attack now it's a brain attack and it's a cerebrovascular syndrome it is because it's not a one single entity rather it cannot be studied like fever appendicitis definitely it's not it's a different so same way even in ayurveda also it has been told under different headings the different stages has been told as different diseases like a semi conscious state can be compared to a disease called madha and conscious state can be compared to a condition called murcha if a patient is in coma then we have to take it as sanyasa and that should be treated accordingly if it is convulsions there are convulsions in many stroke case, cases patient will have convulsions or like seizures then we have to treat like akshipaka if it's hemiplegia which is a part and parcel of stroke is the one which is compared with pakshagata but rather we to understand compare stroke with pakshagata but as such stroke syndrome needs to be understood with the above said headings so with this let me tell you even stroke has been explained in ayurveda 10000 years ago and uh, even the treatment has been beautifully explained it's up to the scholars or people who study ayurveda to understand and treat so it's told as pakshagata in ayurveda or pakshavada paksha refers to either one arm hand or leg vada or aghata refers to hampering of the functions of the one arm or one leg or both hand and leg so this disease has been explained as as a vata disease in ayurveda the diseases are mainly divided as three that is three categories mainly the based on the doshic involvement to ease the treatment the doshas three doshas that is vata pitta kapha i think most of us know about this so are interested in ayurveda first they understand what is this vata pitta kapha because ayurveda explains whatever is there in the universe is there in the human body also not only human body in all living organisms and the ancient acharyas try to formulate medications by by understanding this theory of pancha mahabhutas that is the akash prithvi teja vayu jal this five elements which is present in the nature has been told as to be present in every living organism and these pancha mahabhutas has been grossly told as three doshas that is vata pitta kapha so when we see these three doshas pakshagata or the stroke syndrome comes under we can place it under the vata the disease caused by the vata there are 80 vata nanatma vyadis that is purely because of vata so this comes under, under them so here also it is told there will be impairment of the karmendriya that is the organs hands legs which does the karma action nanendriya that is the sensory organs there will be impairment in the functioning of nanendriya and very interestingly it is told even the manas it's told karmendriya nanendriya and the manas because you have to uh, you have to look into that people suffering from stroke 
will definitely suffer from lot of mental issues either it can be a depression anxiety loss of interest in doing things so the major treatment will include counseling and make them you know once a person gets into stroke they will think the whole life is lost they can't get back to life again so this will be their mentality so you have to do satvava jaya chikitsa what we call that is to uplift the mind or the manas is the major thing so at the same clinical features what is told in the contemporary science has been told in ayurveda also it is just for one's reference i have put it here okay that is uh, vak stamba karmakshaya vak stamba is again the uh, speech is altered ruja that is pain then achetana paksha okay again here the disease is divided into two types okay that is which we like how we say the hemiplegic hemorrhagic and the infarction ischemic same here also one is because of datukshaya and margavarana janya apart from this based on the doshas involved that is doshas never stay alone even though vata is the main dosha pitta and kapha are also involved here so based on the clinical features we can divide into pitta involving vata or kapha involving vata okay this is more to do with the student studies okay so um, coming to this you will wonder whether people ancient people were able to make out whether the disease is treatable or not definitely they were more way more ahead of us to know whether you can one can treat a disease or not so very interestingly it is told in Ayur ayurveda also it is told ishat chetanam okay and there should be pain it should be there should be pain then only the disease is treatable when it comes to pakshagata patient should have pain and there should be movement little movement in the limbs then it is told it is krutra sadhya they don't say it is very easily treatable but it is difficult to treat but definitely with difficulty we can treat this also it's told if there is no pain patient cannot feel the sensation of pain then during those times it was told as a sadhya you can't treat it but you tell the patient it's not treatable and send him back now it was also even in the contemporary science you find like complications there are complications like aspiration pneumonia then the disease is very difficult to treat or it's not treatable at all so with this let's see what's the management i have taken i have not taken here whether it's ayurvedic management or allopathy because the need of the r it's a integrative approach right now we know we know about many sciences and definitely so many sciences have evolved and still it is present because definitely there is something in all the sciences all the medical sciences to um, bestow bestow us so let's do the integrating approach this is what the management we usually do it that is you know first three hours of the stroke is known as the golden hour this is very very important where you need to act very quick because already i have shown the fact that is otherwise the brain tissue will get damaged so to minimize the brain damage and prevent the com complications it's it's very urgent to hospitalize the patient and get the acute management done okay once the acute management is done once you are able to do an mri do a ct scan and find out where the damage is and get the things that is the emergency medical care do the acute management it can be with a contemporary science you can do this then you can move for a rehabilitation rehabilitation that is that is preventing the damage then restoring the functioning of the limbs this is the major part acute management happens very quick but this rehab part rehabilitation takes a lot of time then the patya patya that is what the do's and don'ts which a patient need to follow to get back to his normal daily activities very quick this is how the management usually happens i will just go through what actually happens or what actually the treatment which happens in a 
Ayurveda hospital also. I'm not going to explain here what is the actual management because a patient need not, need not understand in detail or a layman need not understand in detail what actually the treatment is. But definitely we need to understand, okay, this is the line of treatment, how we can support. Even the family members can, how we can support the patient is what required. So even in the ancient acharyas, in our ancient textbooks, there has been treatment principles explained for this disease also. We call it as Chikitsa Sutra. So Charakacharya, even Sushrutacharya has told very clearly the Chikitsa Sutra. Especially Sushrutacharya, he has elaborated the Chikitsa Sutra, which is not told for any other disease, probably I feel. But it's so clearly told and he mentions, okay, he mentions that Athandritaha Tri Chaturova Masan, it's told. Athandritaha, that is, one should not get tired treating this. You should patiently treat a patient for minimum of three to four months, which is exactly what we see in the contemporary science also to treat the time taken to treat a stroke patient. So it's very clearly told three to four months, you need a you need lot of patients to treat the patient. So he told, he tells that earth and the three chaturo vamasa. And it's very clearly told according to the condition. Different disease, that is, it can be a pathanaka, it can be a coma stage, it can be a semi-conscious stage, or it can be with convulsions. One needs to treat with different treatment modalities. And it's clearly told, Vaisheshikaha, that is, specially, the special line of treatment is the Mastishkiha Shirobastihi. Mastishkiha, I'll explain later. That's the special treatment, Shirobasti. That is, even that time it was not it was known that it is it is something which affects the head. Shira is the head. The disease affects the head. So you need to treat, give special care for the Shira. So these are some of the line of treatments told here. Okay. I will actually um, summarize these treatments, what are actually done. Okay. So this is according to the Stages, in the initial stages, what one can do along with the support of the emergency medical care, even Ayurveda treatment can be done immediately after the stroke, when the stroke happens with the emergency care. If a doctor is well equipped with the emergency care, care also Ayurveda treatments, then these treatments of nasya, there's a nasal administration of medicine, then administration of ghee internally, then thalam, that is footing, uh, you know, special packs over the head, then shirodhara, pouring of medications over the head. Okay, these, these treatments can be done and a special panchakarma that is a virechana can be done here in the initial stages. In the later stages, diff different other treatments also can be done here. To summarize, what are the treatments? Let me first explain what are the treatments which can be done. Then I'll mention a few medications what actually are used by Ayurveda practitioners to treat this. Is. So Snehana or the oleation therapy, usually Snehana, this oleation is done internally as well as externally. Internally, medicated ghee is given for a prescribed period. Then Abhyanga, which is shown in the picture, that is massage. Khaya Seka, that is pouring oil for the body. Then Lepa, that is applying special medicated paste over the body, is advised here. Mastishkya, I told you, special therapies. That is one is the Shirovasti, which is the most sought therapy for this. And Shirodhara, most of the times, which we use this. Then Shiro Pichu, that is putting packs over the head. Shiro Abhyanga, head massage, will help you to come out of the condition. Then sudation therapy or Svedana we call like different forms of sudation that is dhara pouring of medicated liquids over the body. Then Sveda is like churna pinda Sveda, powder packs, patra potali, which is shown in the picture. Several leaves are made into potali. Then shashtika shali pinda Sveda, this is the one, specially cooked navara rice is used for the treatment. Masha pinda Sveda. So similar poultices are used to get back the mobility of the patient. 
So most of the times, these Swedana sedation therapies, along with physiotherapy, is regularly done for a particular number of days, usually either 21 days or three months to get back the movements of the patient. Then panchaganma therapy is like vasti, that is a special medicated enema. It's not exactly enema, but I'm mentioning here as enema for the better and easy understanding, which is the action of this vasti is more than any enema, okay, which is one cannot think so much action it has. It, it works from the intestines to the neurons, to the brain. So several vastis of oils like Mahanarayana Thailam, Sachradi Malpakam, Danvantra Malpakam, Shirubala Thailam, Bala Thailam, Brahmi Grutam. These are some of the oils which we generally use. Oils and ghees, actually medicated oils and ghees, which are specially used to treat these conditions. Also, the decoction vastis like Dashamuladi, Eranda Muladi, Mustadi Rajayapana Vasti. So like the several vastis are used to treat this condition. And not to mention, of course, I need to mention this, Nasya. Nasya is one of the major therapy which is commonly used in by most of the Ayurveda practitioners because we say here the medicine administered through the nostril, as you can see in the picture, it's told that it enters the brain directly. So what else can be better than Nasyam to treat a disease which affects the brain? Yes, of course, like oils like Chirubala 101 drops, Anutailam, Danvantram 101 drops, okay? And based on the condition, whether there is stiffness in the shoulders or there is pain in the legs or the brain functions are hampered, different medicines are used here, like Brahmi Grutam is used if there is a memory loss or if there is, Difficulty in the speech is more than we use vachachurnam for the nasyam. Or if the movements and the hands are reduced, then we use the Maharaja Prasarini Thailam for nasyam. So never ever make a statement or understand, okay, Ayurveda, what they do is just a massage, nothing else. No, not, not exactly. So definitely there are different medications according to different conditions. So along with this, as I said, along with this treatment, rehab is very, very important. That is the physiotherapy. Even in Ayurveda, it has been mentioned as Vyayama. Vyayama has been given a lot of importance in the treatment of several diseases it has been told. But definitely it is told it, it should be done looking into the strength of the patient. So physiotherapy has evolved into a different branch today where a trained very good physiotherapist will be able to get back the patient the stamina the strength the training of the muscles because the muscles usually become inactive after a stroke they become inactive and it will be almost like how you train a small child teaching them alphabets the same way the muscles need to be trained here this can be done by a very good physiotherapist so never ever think whether which one to be done. It's always an integrative approach here. It's not that one is going to help, other is not going to. Together, put together, all the systems of medicine will help you here. Even we take help of acupuncture, yoga also. Acupuncture many a times helps for a very quick pain management. And yoga will definitely help you to calm down the you know, mind. And the yogic postures will help to train the muscles, the limbs. So medications I have mentioned here, what we generally use. Generally, these are, it's not the only, these are the medicines. It's a few medicines I have put here. So that, yes, even in Ayurveda, there are medicines. And even there are practitioners who treat stroke in a very good way with very simple medicines like mineral preparations like Bruhatvata Chintamani, Ekanga Virarasa, or it can be our Kashayams like Mahamanjashtadi, Dhanadayanayadi, Balasairayatadi, or Asavarishtams like Dashmula Rishtam, Balarishtam, Ashwagandha Rishtam, Saraswatarishtam, or Vati Gutikas like Brahmi Vati, Dhanvatra Kulika, Manasamatram, 
or we have even we have patent medicines nowadays okay so a very good ayurveda practitioner will be able to select pick up the medicines what exactly is required for a patient and definitely it's not the same medicine which is prescribed from day 1 to day 90 definitely the physician will make choice and will select which is suitable which is suitable on the day of admission and on the day of discharge there will be definitely a difference because based on the avastha based on the condition the patient is progressing the medicine will change okay so now we have spoke a lot about what a doctor can do for this but now it comes to what a patient can do that's more to do with the patya and the apatya that is there is a famous proverb saying in ayurveda which says patye sadika dartascha kim aushadha nishevanam patye asadika dartascha kim aushadha nishevanam so if patya is properly followed then no need of medicine if patya is not followed then the medicine doesn't work exactly this this applies to here also our stroke also so some of the patya things are kulata that is horse gram onion garlic ginger radish ash corn green gram okay then pomegranate grapes gooseberry these are some of the things which are told to be taken followed and when it comes to activity one should keep the body warm gentle free arm exercises warm oil application is what when the patient is in the progress progress track should follow this and apatyas are using the taste like we say vata increases by using the pungent astringent okay very bitter things more of this when person uses more of this then um, the vata increases thus the recovery may not happen and we say incompatible diet that is the virudha ahara or chana rajma chana urad dal bengal gram these are some of the things tur dal green peas curd sprout fermented refrigerated food these need to be uh, you should avoid also one should avoid excessive starvation that is upavasa excessive exercise suppressing natural urges alcohol consumption smoking and very important is exposure to cold air especially cold water or sitting in a ac room sleeping during day time and late night sleep these things need to be avoided so with this i come to an end but here the main thing what one should follow is here that is you know in stroke every minute matters during stroke that is so act fast that is the time which is taken only negligible time should be spared for the investigations which are very really required otherwise it's very urgent to treat a patient otherwise you know brain cells we cannot get them back even with any kind of treatment we can actually make the neuron surrounding that area to take up the functioning of the cells which are dead but definitely we cannot make those neurons which are dead to come back to life again so always try to act fast so that the damage which is happening we can reduce because you know uh, with the death of one neuron second neuron the functioning of the limbs usually that will that is hampered either it's with the speech or you know the area which is affected it it actually predicts which area is going to that is either the hand or the leg or the speech which is going to is getting affected because you know it's very easy to act faster than to repent later then the next thing is control the treatable risk factors this is also very very important thing like either it is a diabetes or hypertension or any cardiac diseases or it is a obesity or your lipid profile please try to keep them under control because these cases i have seen myself people ignoring hypertension this is ha this happens a lot of times especially in india this is the major contributing factor that is the hypertension people think if i skip one dose of the tablet of hypertension what is going to happen nothing will happen 
let me skip one dose and that skipping of one dose will take you to such heights you know which which will cause such a disaster that is not only you or the patient is going to suffer the whole family is going to suffer because of the stroke please try to understand this that is one person one person getting stroke it affects his wife parents children because they have to take care not only the care even financially it's going to drain the family just one single tablet will make a lot of difference so see to that you keep these factors the risk factors which can be controlled that can be taken care even diabetes mellitus i have seen people people come to us you give you medicine that's okay i'll wait sweets what's the use if you are not able to control diabetes also we say people who know that father is diabetic mother is diabetic and you will be knowing you are going to get it but still you will neglect it don't do this see to that you take care of such things and obesity is a major issue nowadays major issue starting from young kids it's people are least bothered what can be done what can be done i'm trying all the things but not able to control it don't say that nothing is more powerful than one's mind so uh, try to bring awareness everywhere this is happening because i know it's because of the abundance what we have nowadays we get at click of our hand we get we have blink yes what is that blink it at the blink of our eyelid you get the food you get whatever you want at home but that's not the lifestyle what we should be following see to that what we eat so take necessary treatments of hypertension if any this is major thing and the what i can provide you or what i am best is the ancient solutions for wellness and recuperation that's ayurveda okay ayurveda is the best way to either you say ayurveda yoga our age old sciences ancient sciences they have the solutions for whatever the problems we are nowadays facing okay which is mentioned should be incorporated in day to day practice okay so to mention few are dinacharya please practice make it a habit to learn dinacharya it's beautifully explained in most of the textbooks of ayurveda if you can pick up one ashtanga hrudayam ashtanga hrudayam you would be knowing in the southern states of kerala tamil nadu it's it's read like bhagavad gita and in north india the charak samhita it's read like bhagavad gita so i think many people age old people or the our ancestors were knowing these things and they practice this dinacharya is a daily regimen which tells you it's very clearly mentioned here what time you should get up what you should be doing in the day that is doing exercise is a part of our daily regimen regimen do, doing massages okay applying oil over the head over the feet these are the simple steps which actually can over a long period of time can control these kind of diseases okay even in dinacharya it's very clearly told that one should go or cover the head with a shawl or a cap or a hat and go in the sun it's to protect our head because you know the brain which is present in the head in our inside the skull so it's a very it's called as marma that is a vital point in ayurveda one of the vital point the foremost vital point is the brain tissue so you need to protect this because why so much importance is given because once it damaged we cannot get them back so try to follow this then one more interesting concept is rutucharya if i start talking i can talk the whole day about dinacharya rutucharya practicing these things but definitely understanding these things rutucharya refers to the seasonal regime that is summer definitely the food habits the clothes what we wear the place how we live everything will be different whereas in winter it definitely different also you would have observed this our festivals are also you know are so well framed taking into consideration the seasonal changes so try to follow the culture what we have the seasonal changes try to adopt the food habits which is apt for each season it's not the same 
same food we are going to eat the whole year definitely that's boring i know right they may it has been told it has been mentioned in the textbooks also that this needs to be taken during summer this during winter also there are purificatory procedures are told in ayurveda try to understand them and follow them one more very interesting thing is the rasayan chikitsa that is the rejuvenative therapies see how intelligent our ancient people were to prevent a disease which is going to happen during our 60s or 70s they have told start a medicine now itself in the 30s or 20s so that you don't get that disease in the 70s that is the rasayan chikitsa rasa ayana means something it's a rejuvenative therapies therapy doesn't mean it's only doing some massage even it can be in the form of a medicine taking ghee and milk is again told as a nitya rasayana it's a regular rasayana rejuvenative rejuvenative thing also understand concepts like nitya sevaniya ahara you should be wondering or you should be you will be surprised if you read in ayurveda it's told only particular food are told as a regular diet like the moong dal ghee milk honey pomegranate gooseberry like this very few things are told to be taken regularly not others not your sprouts sprouts are not told in ayurveda as a regular food item it's told as once in a while you can have even curds curds is not mentioned as an nitya sevani ahara mind it because these are the causes which will lead to our dreaded diseases like stroke then concept of viruddha ahara that is incompatible food that is taking fish with milk honey and ghee in equal quantity or salt and milk these are few examples of viruddha ahara at a outside look you may feel what is going to happen but on a long run if you are practicing taking these food articles on a long daily basis for years together then definitely that's going to cause problem and one more important concept is the vega dharana vega dharana that is suppression of natural urges we see a lot of patients coming to us nowadays saying i don't have time so i didn't go to washroom i didn't had time so i didn't drink water i am not able to sleep in the night so i sleep in the morning so in ayurveda it's very in the initial text itself it's very clearly told vega na dharaye like few natural urges like passing flatters bowel bladder sleep sneezing okay or even crying that's also a natural urge which you should not hold it or suppress these urges and it's very clearly mentioned suppressing these urges even can cause cardiac disease to very severe diseases then okay this is something which you should not be doing or which should be doing there's something else very interesting thing is the satrutta that is a good conduct that's you know because nowadays you see more most of the hemorrhagic cases because it occurs because of the increased hypertension bp how your bp increases because you are in so much stress you are not able to manage the stress a person is not able to manage the stress so why do we get so much stressed let's not get stressed no let's follow some sadhrutas which is told in our literature the good conduct that is following the several good conducts and let's adapt them in life and have a healthy lifestyle because why i am telling so much about this is ayurveda tells us the first and foremost thing is swasthasya swasthasya swasthya rakshana let's promote or let's protect the health of a healthy person then aturasya vikara prashnam prashamanam that is later let's treat if a disease even though if you are protecting your health by mistake some disease happens then later let's let's treat that disease but let's not go to treat the disease first that's not our motto our first motto is to keep our health maintain our health with with so much of knowledge whatever acharyas have has given us let's try to maintain our health even after that let's if you get a disease then we doctors are here to treat that don't worry about that with this i don't conclude i open the session for discussion because this is the most interesting part i feel
Thank you, Doctor. Thank you for that wonderful session. Yes, it was quite an eye opener for most of us. And uh, I feel uh, the, the feeling is um, there everywhere. So, uh, as you said, we will open this session for the, uh, you know, much more interesting uh, part of it, uh, the discussion part. Uh, we have quite a uh, few questions which have come up inside the chat box. So, shall we start with the questions, Doctor? Sure, sure, sure. Okay, thank you. So the first question is, are there Ayurvedic medicines that have a blood thinning effect potentially capable of causing hemorrhage in the body, that is particularly the brain, and uh, ca caution while taking such medicine, medication? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Even Ayurveda, we, uh, we say few drugs. We have, uh, uh, we have the medicines which are actually grouped based on their actions. Like Stambaka Gana or Utejaka uh, Ganas, like this, the group of drugs of medicines are there. So definitely, one should take if you are taking, uh, like if you are taking few medications like uh, gooseberry. I told you Nitya Sevani Ahara, like the gooseberry ghee or pomegranate. Few food articles, it's okay if you take them. But when you are taking an Ayurveda medication, definitely you should take the advice of an Ayurveda doctor. Because most of the doctors doesn't say, take this medicine for lifelong. Nobody will say that. Definitely because they know that there are going to be some other effects also with Ayurveda medication. That's why always Ayurveda medicine go with a Anupana. We say as Anupanam. Uh, that is a carrier. Which actually uh, nowadays we neglect this Anupanam because we may think, oh, it's very difficult for the patient to take. One medicine itself is so difficult. But then how Anupanam also they will make and take it. But uh, the I concept behind this Anupanam was to counteract those effects. So it's better always when you are taking a medication, try to ask the doctor about that and take the medication. Thank you, doctor. So uh, the next question is, can overactivity of the body also cause stroke? Of course. Of course, it's very well known because... Uh, it's a, as per Ayurveda, it's a Vata Vyadi stroke. We consider under the group of Vata Vyadi. Vata Vyadi, the main causes of Vata Vyadis are Ati, that is anything doing over, whether it can be excise, doing excise uh, excessively or swimming or horse riding or traveling. Not only this, even it is told Ati Chintana, that is even thinking excessively also can cause. So anything in excise, excess. So always we have to um, understand the concept of use and abuse. There is a fine line between use and abuse. So one should, it's, it's not only to do with stroke, with anything it can be. So anything we abuse, then definitely we land up in damage. Thank you, ma'am. Next, next question is, Madam, can any vegetable or fruit supplement the treatment of stroke in addition to medication? Can any food be responsible for stroke? Yeah, uh, I think it was clear in the Patya Patya what I mentioned you. So, uh, food actually which dry up the body, which we say Vata, which increase the Vata, will are responsible for the stroke. So, usually we advise most of our patients to avoid taking food and vegetables like, you know, potato, green pea, rajma, channa, uh, wooded dal, fermented food, sprouts also, um, not to be taken, not to be taken in excess, try to avoid them. And even activities like, you know, uh, sitting in cold, because many of our patients usually with a facial palsy, you uh, will be knowing facial palsy patients, they come to us and they give us a, uh, you know, Activity, what they have done. We ask them, what did you do? What did you do before day? They usually, we get a history like, you know, they'll be sitting in a bus in the window seat where the wind will be hitting their face for a long duration, maybe one hour or something like that. Then they end up with a facial palsy. Here also you can see facial palsy is a part of stroke. So this is hitting of the cold wind or, you know, sitting in AC for long hours or going in rain or, you know, um, exposure to cold wind. These are the main causes we tell them not to do these activities at the same time you know the food food and activities like you know massaging the body with oil taking warm water bath taking warm water bath and uh, food articles like the moong 
milk ghee these are few to mention so definitely help for the um as a adjuvant or help the medicine to act in a better way because first comes the food then comes the medicine so if you are correct with the food then it's easy to for the medicine to work so if one can follow this properly then definitely recovery will also happen in a quick way so patya always doesn't mean it's only the food even it 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 includes the activities also activities refers to activity of the mind and the body it's not only the body even it includes the mind also thank you ma'am the next uh, question is marma chikitsa in stroke marma chikitsa as such i am not a marma chikitsaka so i am uh, at least uh, informed about this but definitely i feel if a marma chikitsaka would have definitely something to share with for the stroke definitely you know the massages when we do we do with the marma uh, that is uh, um exactly on the marma points we have uh, uh, several marmas in the body so but i tell you this marma chikitsa it should be done by a person who exactly knows or has learned from a proper teacher because there are marmas called um, vikalya marmas that is if these marmas are touched in a improper way they can cause uh, you know damage or anga vaikalyata we call it as anga vaikalyata or vikalata Uh, organ may be dysfunction, may dysfunction, or if some points are touched in a improper way, even it can cause death. So, marma chikitsa should be done by a proper chikitsakas. That's what I can say for this. I would also like to add here something about yeah. that. Uh, Tirumular, uh, I had the opportunity to be part of a small uh, workshop, uh, uh, which is. Uh, Uh, Varma Chikitsakas. So these are uh, the, the the institute is a Varmology institute. So it is uh, slightly different from the Marma points which Ayurveda talks about. But then the treatments done there are I have seen results there, and I have uh, also spoken with a few Varma uh, practitioners who do give treatment for stroke and all that. So uh, as uh, Madam said, uh, uh, if uh, the uh, treatments are done by proper Marma Chikitsakas. then we do find very good results in marma chikitsa for stroke with that i'd like to go to the next question can we treat a patient of stroke with hemiplegia for a long time can we um, uh, bring back the activity in the terminals and make the patient at least partly normal yeah definitely definitely sir um we can treat a patient and uh, Uh, even if it's not partly normal many of our patients have become completely normal uh, it depends on the you know how fast we treat them and the uh, enthusiasm shown by the patient to become all right you know, most of the time it's it, it's it lies in the mind how we work uh, but definitely we can treat the patient thank you ma'am i would also like to add uh, to ma'am ma'am if you would like to uh, uh, you share your uh, clinic phone number uh, for anybody who needs to uh, uh, get in contact with you again you may please do that in the chat box so, chat box so that everybody are uh, 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 finding it useful sure what can we incorporate in our dinacharya to prevent stroke preempt stroke sorry it should be preempt stroke so the, uh, what can we incorporate in our dinacharya to preempt stroke there is another question as i told as a part of dinacharya one should uh, actually nasyam i told you the nasal medication which is told uh, nasya it's of two that is marsha and pratimarsha we say that is one which can be practiced as a part of dinacharya this nasya that is putting medication in the nostrils uh, that is two drops in each nostril this can be practiced by everyone to prevent any diseases above the shoulder a uh, head neck and shoulder to prevent these these diseases one can follow nasya one can follow abhyanga that is the oil massages regularly also vyayama that is a stipulated exercises stipulated workout which one can do according to their constitution i i would like to mention here ayurveda always always mentions 
one the treatment should be done based on one's constitution the place where he is living and according to the season yes ma'am so uh, uh, the next question is after post surgical uh, uh, of pontine stroke sometimes diminished vision lack of thalamus arises what will be the ayurvedic approach for this complication <laughs> definitely there are uh, good approaches i think girish will be the good person because he is a specialist in this to treat these conditions yes girish <laughs> thank you ma'am yes uh, there are uh, 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 quite some line of treatments uh, mentioned for uh, people who are affected by the vata so particularly uh, in case of stroke so diminished vision is taken care of by a set of treatments but that depends on what is the present situation in the retina not just uh, you know the external appearances uh, so there might be many causes for the diminished vision which would have uh, 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 you know uh, exacerbated due to the stroke so uh, uh, we should have a look at uh, the total eye checkup and then find out what the reason is and then go for the treatment there then uh, uh, same goes for lack of thalamus uh, as well so uh, line of treatments do include treatments like kriya kalpas which are uh, uh, tarpana putapaka such methodologies are used the medications used are uh, sometimes jivanti adhikrita is used sometimes triphalagrita is used but then it needs to be first evaluated and then the treatment should be practiced not everybody has to undergo uh, tarpana or putapaka sometimes it is uh, uh, contraindicated in certain cases so we need to have a proper evaluation and then go, go for the treatment Uh, uh by the way i would like to ask everybody to please fill in the feedback form the link has been mentioned in the uh, chat box kindly uh, fill in the feedback form it is also helpful for you to attain the certificates uh we have some comments ma'am so excellent presentation kudos to your attempt to make this simple uh the next comment is clear presentation madam a layman can follow your views thank the you. next point is a uh, good presentation doctor thank you for the time spared for enlightening this small group and uh, ashtanga this is from our md mr tvs varia uh, th then there was another question what about the yogasanas and stroke which and all we can advise uh, yogasanas as you know yoga uh, yoga refers to not to a set of postures uh, it includes asana as well as dhyana dharana pranayama uh, so based on the stage in which the patient is one can go for either dhyana or pranayama several pranayamas there which are like you know shitali shitakari brahmari mainly the shitali shitakari help you to calm down one will help the person to calm down so this can be uh, easily done in the initial stages initial stages where a person is either bedridden or not able to do the activities this can be done or it can be a surya nadi or chandra nadi based on whatever the condition patient is one can be advised then the asanas are definitely a, uh, a posture a typical posture cannot be done but a, a simple postures to improve the flexibility of the limbs can be done starting from the you know um warming up then going to the difficult asanas so this we cannot say these are the particular asanas because uh, whereas in case of diabetes or in thyroid we can say these are the particular asanas one should follow because like in thyroid and all we say sarvangasana needs to be done then simhasana needs to be done one should do in diabetic cases we say sarvangasana halasana can be done but here uh, stroke as you said it's a syndrome correct it's not just one disease so according to each stage we should look into the stage of the patient and then the asanas need to be planned but definitely um, especially the pranayama dhyana has a major role here rather than asana asanas come in the later stage thank you ma'am there is another comment thank you madam mm -hmm. helpful for all the ayurveda students easy for us to understand and learn uh, there is a suggestion before take home yeah. message a recap yeah. of the talk at the end would be more helpful thank you for the excellent presentation would you like me to do a recap yeah. it would be good <laughs> okay sure sure sure
so i just wanted to tell what's the you know uh, burning problem how stroke is affecting people so even i was actually astonished to see it is killing more people than malaria tuberculosis aids together that what made me oh my god what is this disease so this is something interesting which i found that is nowadays the stroke term is not used in the medical community it's more to do with a brain attack and a, it's called as acute ischemic cerebrovascular syndrome like in heart attack and these are the uh, definitions or what exactly is stroke to understand so it's a majorly the two things that is either a block one will be a block which usually the block happens because of the increased fat in the body that is lipids the cholesterol the bad cholesterol not the good cholesterol it's definitely the bad cholesterol so always mind it taking ghee is not going to increase your good bad cholesterol only how we take the ghee this is what i always explain my patients so this is something interesting that is there is a misconcept most of my patients ask me taking ghee is not going to in increase cholesterol i tell them ghee will not increase your bad cholesterol it will increase your only good cholesterol you know brain is almost like a butter and we say the blood brain barrier the medicines can enter the brain with only a lipid medium that is a oil or a ghee and here since it's almost like a butter we always use the medicines which are based with ghee so you can see all grutams are meant for the brain so ghee is not going to cause you bad it causes you bad when you take a ghee followed by an ice cream or a cold drink or you eat a nice meal with ghee and then you sleep immediately then that is going to cause problem otherwise it's it doesn't cause problem so the block which has happened is the ischemic one hemorrhagic usually because of the hypertension or increase in stress you don't get your bp checked and it's almost 180 200 because this is what happens when patients are checked their you know their bp is checked at the time of stroke it will be around 200 180 something like this so never do that whether you control it with either yoga dhyana or with ayurveda medication or with a allopathy medication whatever medication you take please try to control it that's the um, aim of us one thing control it how you control it's up to you because one of my patient actually came to me saying she's taking n number of pills ayurveda pills for blood pressure but it's not coming down because she has got lot of stress and our medicines are not chemicals to control you know you take one paracetamol you are 104 temperature will become 98.6 but in ayurveda you have to work with your mind you have to put yourself in that to get our medicines to work so her blood pressure was so much 180 every day it's 180 even with four pills i told her please don't do this you cannot you are not able to she's not able to control her stress anxiety it's just going in her house so i told her please check whichever medicine is appropriate for you and do that then she shifted to a allopathy hypertensive drug now her bp is normal she is also cool now so my um this is what i did for the students actually to compare the three types then the major thing is the risk factors the modifiable and the non modifiable risk factors then the features clinical features which usually you find in a stroke patient so very important thing is in hemorrhagic stroke usually there will be severe headache then nausea vomiting then sudden decline in the level of consciousness either it can be unconsciousness confusion or even it can be a coma also that we have to make out apart from whereas in case of ischemic stroke there will be a slow change or even it can be a sudden change that is numbness weakness usually this happens like a patient will be sitting in a chair dining chair after you know having food then usually they'll fall to one side or usually many a times we find the stroke cases in patients like in the sleep they get this so we usually advise people not to take dals um curds buttermilk in the night leafy vegetables because according to ayurveda these are something which increase your vata 
the movement of vata should be always downwards but in the sleep when it is obstructed you know when you are not able to pass the flatus or in the position when this vata the obstructed vata comes upwards it moves to your heart and the head that's why you see more number of heart attacks or the brain attack the strokes are more in the sleep because of the increased vata so we always advise our patients not to take food which increases vata during the night time keep your night meal rather it's not a night it's a evening meal few investigations which are actually needed to treat the stroke this is the diagnostic scale then the stroke syndrome what actually in ayurveda we take it as this is what ayurveda has to say that is pakshagata we call it and these are almost the symptoms uh, only difference is they are all in sanskrit terms that's all what ayurveda says and the conventional medicine says this is the about the possibility of the treatment prognosis we call it and this is the management here i i always emphasize on the integrative approach for any disease when it comes to any disease it's always you pick up the best from each system and treat and the importance of the golden hour the first 3 hours after stroke how you are going to manage acute management of the stroke then rehab and the patya patya so these are the different treatment modalities or stored in ayurveda so this is what we do the oleation therapy the special therapies for the head then the sudation therapy the enema before this is the virechana virechana is also one major treatment panchakarma this is the vasti different vasti different nasyam and the physiotherapy so all this go hand in hand usually we don't wait for completing panchakarma treatments then go for physiotherapy we do physiotherapy panchakarma and the medications all three even if required acupuncture yoga all this together we do all the things hand in hand for a faster recovery so the interesting part will be to know about the dinacharya rutucharya and uh, you know prasayan chikitsa it's the evolving now the evolving uh, chikitsa in ayurveda is a rasayan therapy therapy um, actually rasayana chikitsa every treat, every disease after treated one should follow the rasayana chikitsa so that the disease doesn't come back which very much which is very much important so this is the main logo of ayurveda that is main motto our main motto is to protect the health of everyone and then afterwards if something goes wrong let's treat that so i thank everyone for the patience listening and at first place i thank the um barrier family shashi sir and my very good friend girish for giving me this opportunity um, to share my views about this thesis um, and i wish you all a great success i also come up with more and more seminars like this so that not only the students even the public can be enlightened about the conditions which are actually need our attention thank you thank you ma'am thank you so much we do uh, promise you that the webinar series this uh, will continue for uh, the general public as well Uh, uh to get gain more uh, uh, idea about uh, what ayurveda is and how ayurveda can help uh, we do see a few more comments uh, one is thank you ma'am expecting a, and eagerly waiting for more seminar please arrange more interesting webinar like this so thank you thank you uh, we will do that sir and uh, uh, with that i would uh, uh, like to ask uh, the uh, public here uh, would you have any more questions to ask madam you may either put it in the chat box or ask directly as well hello yes sir sir grutha can we take daily uh, that to mahesh agra mahesh agrutha ma'am sir mahesh agrutha usually it's not indicated daily 
Uh, because Mahisha Kshira, Mahisha Gruta, we use it for insomnia, that is treating sleeplessness. But there is definitely everything has an exception. Every rule has an exception, you know. So uh, if you are accustomed to taking Mahisha Gruta and if your physical activities actually, you know, uh, can substantiate the Mahisha Gruta what you are taking, then it should be fine. Thank Otherwise, you. usually Gokshira, Gokruta is preferred in the textbook as the best. But definitely Mahishakshira, Mahishakruta is also mentioned. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Any more questions from anybody? I think we do not have any more questions. Uh, we have the YouTube channel link as well uh, put in uh, in our chat box. Uh, please, everybody, please, uh, you may follow the YouTube channel uh, for all these um, uh, webinars which have been recorded and have been put there. Uh, we have some uh, uh, illustrious uh, uh, guests here as well uh, in, in the webinar today. Um, Srini, sir, would you like to add something? Uh, would you like to say something, sir? I think he has left. So anyways, uh, no issues. Uh, I would uh, like to ask uh, our uh, medical superintendent, Dr. TVN Varia to uh, please put in a few words. Hello. Yes, sir. Uh, very nice presentation. Uh, actually, uh, indirectly, what we have told this Nityam Hidahar Vihar Sevi Samit Shegari Vishay Shosakraha Dadavara Satyavara Chamavan Aptopa Sevi the Bhavati Arogaha. So, to avoid disease, we have to that is follow all these things. So, it may be the Najariya, Rudujariya, Rasayanam, whatever it is. But all the things are, is it possible uh, the, 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 uh, during these uh, hectic days? I don't know, because uh, all are in a hurry to uh, run away from all the things. Hmm? Uh, of course, they have got uh, uh, their own problems. But what we feel that is uh, uh, in our uh, service for the past so many years, Kevala Vada is not uh, generally, it is not coming. All the patients have uh, multiple diseases. So it, actually, it is very difficult. Nowadays, especially they are coming with uh, more diabetic or uh, with some other uh, renal disease along with this uh, hemiplegia. So we must be very careful to deal with these patients. Of course, of course the modern uh, investigation methods we can uh, adopt. But uh, that alone uh, cannot be, uh, that is, uh, we cannot trust uh, alone uh, because uh, there is uh, no, uh, there is uh, no lab is uh, investigating the same way. They have got uh, different uh, modalities and they, have, they are giving different uh, views on that. So we have to use our brain and see uh, that is our system must prevail. And uh, give maximum uh, relief to the patients. Of course, very nice, doctor. Let's uh, proceed like this again. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I would uh, also like to ask uh, uh, our uh, MD, uh, Mr. T.S. Varia, to put in a few words. Uh, sir, you're muted. Uh, it was very nice. Uh, to have spent your uh, part of your time uh, with us. It was quite enlightening and uh, we this, this particular uh, phenomenon is uh, becoming more and more common in the younger generation, I would say, where uh, people are not able to, uh, uh, what do you call it, keep their cool and uh, uh, live their life in this rat race, uh, where especially you see in places like uh, the metros, where uh, 
uh, traveling and the conveying kind uh, of conveyance itself is uh, uh, the commutation itself is a big uh, uh, pain for the people who work go for work so i think uh, in this uh, the, the ayurveda should be able to help with all your uh, suggestions uh, we should be able to advise our uh, patients and the general public in general to adopt a lifestyle and uh, habits which really uh, takes the temper off their life thank you for uh, again for sparing our time for sparing your time thank you so much sir thank you sir uh, i would like to ask uh, the executive director mr t r shashivarya to put in a few words dr Rex, uh, dr rashmi thank you very much for uh, the enlightening session you are pro the professor in you has really been you know successful i i, I wish all uh, students of ayurveda come to you for at least one lesson from you because the clarity with which you have gone through the subject is amazing and uh, i am sure all the participants here have taken some message home from you uh, excellent session very clear and uh, very uh, simple uh, in, in a very simple way you have put all the things across uh, so that every one of us understand perfectly well what you actually mean by all these terminologies i'm sure uh, you are, you will be an excellent teacher to all your students i wish you all the very best thank you for sparing your time and coming to ashtanga's webinar your webinar will uh, your the, the lesson webinar will also go into our youtube archives and people can definitely be seeing this watching this later thank you very much for the evening thank you thank you so much sir very grateful to you with that i'd uh, like to come to the end of the session first i would like to thank uh, all the participants present here for uh, giving us your time uh, and uh, uh, coming for all our webinar sessions i would also like to thank our speaker dr rashmi for sparing her time uh, i would like to add that i had had the opportunity to work with her as a colleague when i was working in bangalore iam healthcare center uh, thank you ma'am thank you ma'am for your uh, time uh, i would like to uh, thank uh, uh, vignesh uh, the person who is taking care of uh, our it support uh, i should say uh, thank you vignesh for uh, doing this he is from e quadriga thank you vignesh so with that i would like to come to uh, the end of the session today thank you everybody thank you once again uh, meet you again next month uh, in the fourth week thank you thank you